patients able to overcome uh, their nausea and vomiting from their chemotherapy and perhaps even be cured of their malignancies uh, by using uh, cannabis. But what really uh, started me in, in my research was uh, in my work with uh, HIV AIDS patients. Uh, again, seeing them uh, being eaten alive, if you will, by the AIDS wasting syndrome, which was a common uh, sort of end of life phenomenon that we had before we uh, discovered effective antiretroviral drugs. And at about the, the time that uh, Delta 9 THC uh, was approved, that the drug uh, dronabinol or marinol uh, for treatment of this wasting syndrome uh, in HIV patients, uh, we began to hear from the patients that they actually uh, preferred smoking the cannabis uh, because of the, their ability to titrate the effect better than swallowing the pill. And we know now that uh, cannabis, when taken by mouth, either as baked products or as the, the medication, Delta 9 THC, has much different absorption and, and kinetics. It takes a much longer time to reach a much lower peak, and then it stays in the system for, for quite a while. Whereas when it's inhaled, either uh, smoked or vaporized, uh, the peak plasma concentration is actually reached in about two and a half minutes, and then falls over the next 30 minutes. So the effect happens more rapidly and perhaps dissipates more rapidly. And when taken by mouth, the delta-9 THC, the main psychoactive component, is metabolized in the liver uh, to an 11-hydroxy form, which is also psychoactive. So when eaten, either as a baked product or as the pill, uh, the delta-9 THC creates this psychoactive metabolite that makes people have even more of a psychoactive effect than when it's smoked, and for, for many patients this is unpleasant. So in uh, 1992, I was challenged, if, if I may, uh, to uh, study uh, smoked marijuana in patients with the AIDS wasting syndrome and to compare it uh, to Marinol or Dronabinol, which had just been licensed and approved uh, for that indication. And uh, that began a bit of a sort of struggle with, with our government to be able to conduct a clinical trial, but ultimately, after a number of years, we did get a million dollars and 1,400 uh, government uh, cannabis cigarettes to uh, do a clinical trial. It wasn't anymore in patients with the AIDS wasting syndrome because uh, by this time we had effective antiretroviral drugs and that syndrome had disappeared. Uh, and with uh, the National Institute on Drug Abuse, they have actually a congressional mandate that they can only study substances of abuse as substances of abuse. So they were never going to allow me or to give me marijuana to study it as a possible therapeutic agent. The study that I ultimately got funded for was to study whether or not it was safe for patients with HIV on the new potent antiretroviral regimens to use cannabis. Because there had been a report in the literature of a patient using uh, ecstasy or MDMA and dying from an overdose of uh, ecstasy when taken with his antiviral drugs. So the question that I posed and that the government allowed me to investigate was, is it safe for patients on the antiretroviral drugs uh, to smoke uh, cannabis or to take uh, the cannabis pill uh, while they're taking protease inhibitors. 